Flooding in northern Italy has killed at least 11 people and forced thousands more to evacuate their homes. Terrifying tragedy in Italy. Shocked the world. Jesus warned this. Flooding has hit northern Italy hard, with at least 11 people losing their lives and thousands being forced out of their homes. But what led to this disaster? Could it be a sign from above or just a natural occurrence? Let's dig into the details. Imagine the Italian sky on a sunny afternoon when suddenly a storm starts brewing in the distance. Dark clouds gather like a powerful shield of nature. The first rumble of thunder sounds like something out of ancient mythology, followed by flashes of lightning that light up the sky. Winds pick up, shaking trees and stirring up the sea. Rain pours down heavily, making a rhythmic tapping on roofs. Gusts of wind break branches and uproot trees, while thunder continues to boom and lightning flashes like fireworks. Each strike illuminates the sky, but also adds to the feeling of fear. Interestingly, a similar event happened recently in Texas, where a strange sound accompanied a lightning storm caught on camera. You hear that? The mystery deepened when the same sound was heard in Italy. But what could it be? Stick around till the end to uncover the truth. The fierce storm brought about widespread flooding, transforming the landscape into a scene of chaos and devastation. Picture this. Roads, once bustling with traffic, now resembled rushing rivers, carrying debris and destruction in their currents. Houses situated near the rivers found themselves submerged under the rising waters, while fields, previously vibrant with life, were now vast expanses of water stretching as far as the eye could see. As the floodwaters surged, they spared nothing in their path, carrying away trees, fences, and anything else in their wake. The sheer force of the water caused trees to bow and bend, unable to withstand its power. The once green grass disappeared beneath a murky layer of water, leaving behind a surreal landscape. Adding to the chaos, hailstones fell from the sky with force, resembling dark diamonds as they crashed down onto the Italian mainland. The sound of their impact echoed through the air, sending panic rippling through both humans and animals alike. Meanwhile, below the surface, cold winds churned, bringing with them dark, ominous clouds that blanketed the sky, casting a shadow over the land. The atmosphere became heavy with tension and unease as the storm continued to rage on. But the aftermath of such natural disasters extends far beyond the immediate destruction. Lives are lost, homes are destroyed, and communities are left to pick up the pieces in the wake of the storm's fury. The loss of property, including homes, furniture, and vital infrastructure, only adds to the immense challenges faced by those affected. In times like these, it's important for us to come together and offer our support to those in need. Let's keep the people of Italy in our thoughts and prayers as they navigate through these difficult times. May they find the strength and resilience to rebuild and recover from this disaster. Amen. Let's go back to the curious tale of the strange sound in Texas. In the midst of a fierce lightning storm, a brave man decided to live stream the event, hoping to capture something extraordinary. Way off in that direction somewhere. You hear that? As bolts of lightning lit up the sky, a bizarre and eerie sound echoed through the air, seemingly linked to each flash. The man, astonished by what he was witnessing, shared the phenomenon with his viewers in real time. The sound, akin to a spine-chilling scream, cut through the darkness of the night, evoking a range of reactions among those watching. Some speculated wildly, suggesting supernatural causes like the mythical screaming in the night goddess, or even aliens. Others proposed more down-to-earth explanations, like dragons or other mythical creatures. 
Despite the flurry of theories, no one could conclusively determine the source or reason behind the eerie sound. As the live stream continued, the mysterious screams added an extra layer of tension and mystery to the already dramatic storm. The comment section overflowed with speculation and disbelief as viewers grappled with the surreal experience unfolding before them. In the aftermath of the live stream, the enigmatic event sparked widespread discussion and debate. News outlets picked up the story, fueling curiosity and speculation even further. Yet, despite numerous attempts to rationalize or explain away the phenomenon, the mysterious screams remained shrouded in secrecy, leaving both the live streamer and his audience bewildered and unsettled. The incident served as a powerful reminder of the vast mysteries that still exist in our world, highlighting that even in our modern age, there are phenomena that defy explanation and continue to capture our imaginations. In the middle of a wild storm in Italy, there was something strange happening, a mysterious sound that nobody could explain. It added an extra layer of worry to an already tense situation with all the thunder and lightning. Some people felt like it was a sign of something really bad about to happen. Every time lightning lit up the sky, this weird sound got louder and scarier. People who heard it were puzzled, trying to figure out what was going on. Some thought maybe it was a message from God or even aliens from outer space. Others thought it reminded them of old stories about the end of the world. All this talk about the end of the world made everyone nervous, with people bringing up stuff from religion and old stories to try and understand what was happening. Some thought it was a sign that we needed to change our ways before it was too late, while others were just plain scared and didn't know what to do. It was like a real-life mystery unfolding before our eyes, and nobody had all the answers. After the strange sound echoed through the Italian sky, people everywhere started talking about what it could mean. The discussions spread wide, catching the attention of folks all over the world. The sound got everyone thinking, from religious experts to scientists to folks who love a good conspiracy theory. Each had their own idea about what it could signify. But no matter who was talking or what they believed, one thing was for sure. That weird sound left a big impression on everyone who heard it. Whether they thought it was a sign of something really bad coming or just a strange thing that happened, it made them think about life and the universe in a different way. Now, when it comes to storms, they're pretty important in the Bible too. There are lots of stories about how God protected people from storms. And even though we still need shelter from storms today, the Bible also gives us some comforting words to get through tough times. It says that just like how storms pass and the sun comes out again, our tough times will also get better. Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This verse, found in the Gospel of Luke 2.52, describes the growth and development of Jesus during his childhood and early years. It reads, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This verse highlights four key aspects of Jesus' growth. 1. Wisdom Jesus grew not only physically, but also intellectually. He acquired knowledge understanding, and wisdom as he matured, demonstrating his human capacity for learning and development. 2. Stature This refers to Jesus' physical growth and development. Like any human being, he experienced the natural progression from childhood to adulthood, physically growing in size and strength. 3. Favor with God Jesus enjoyed a close and special relationship with God the Father. As the Son of God, he lived in perfect obedience and communion with God, receiving divine favor and approval. 4. Favor with man. Jesus also experienced positive relationships with other people. He interacted with others in a way that earned their respect, admiration, and favor. His compassion, kindness, and teachings endeared him to many. 
Overall, this verse encapsulates the holistic growth of Jesus physically, intellectually, spiritually, and socially during his time on earth as he prepared for his ministry and eventual sacrifice for humanity. It emphasizes his humanity while also hinting at his divine nature and purpose. The storm also symbolizes God's wrath. Wrath is defined as the emotional response to perceived wrong and injustice, often translated as anger, indignation, vexation, or irritation. Both people and God get angry, but there's a big difference between how God gets angry and how people do. God's wrath is holy and always justified. Man's is never holy and rarely justified. In the Old Testament of the Bible, God's anger is a response to people doing bad things and not obeying Him. Worshiping false gods, called idolatry, often made God angry, Psalm 78, 56, 66. God's anger is always aimed at those who don't do what He wants, Deuteronomy 12, 6, 46, Joshua 7, 1, Psalm 2, 1, 1, 6. The Old Testament prophets often talked about a future day when God's anger would come, Zephaniah 1 to 14 to 15. God's anger towards sin and disobedience is completely fair because his plan for mankind is holy and perfect, just like he is. God gave people a way to get back in his good graces, repentance, which turns God's wrath away from the sinner. If someone doesn't want to follow that plan, they're turning down God's love, kindness, forgiveness, and blessings, and they'll face his fair anger. The New Testament of the Bible also talks about God as someone who gets angry about sin. The story of the rich man and Lazarus shows that God will judge people for their actions, and there will be serious consequences for the unrepentant sinner for what they've done wrong. Luke 16, 19 to 31. John 3, 36 says, Anyone who believes in Jesus has eternal life, but anyone who doesn't won't have life, and God's anger will stay on them. People who believe in Jesus won't be punished for their sins because Jesus took the punishment for them when he died on the cross, Romans 5, 6, 11. Those who reject the Son and refuse him as their savior will face judgment on the day of reckoning, Romans 2, 5, 2, 6. Conversely, scripture cautions against human wrath in Romans 12, 19, Ephesians 4, 26, and Colossians 3, 8 to 10. God alone possesses the authority to exact vengeance, for his retribution is flawless and righteous, whereas human wrath is tainted by sin, leaving one vulnerable to demonic influence. For Christians, harboring anger and wrath contradicts our new identity in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17. To break free from the grip of wrath, Believers rely on the Holy Spirit to purify and cleanse their hearts from such emotions. Romans 8 illustrates victory over sin through a life lived in the Spirit. Romans 8, 5, 8, 58, Philippians 4, 4 to 7 assures that a mind surrendered to the Spirit experiences peace. The wrath of God is indeed formidable and terrifying. Only those sheltered by the blood of Christ shed for us on the cross can find assurance that God's wrath will not befall them. Having been justified by His blood, how much more can we trust to be rescued from God's wrath through Him? Romans 5, 9. God remains willing to save those who repent. The concept of salvation holds profound significance for Christians, encapsulating the idea of deliverance from various aspects. Initially, when the Israelites stood at the brink of the Red Sea, Moses urged them to witness the salvation of the Lord, Exodus 14, 13, where God provided physical deliverance from the armies of Egypt. In the New Testament, salvation takes on a broader meaning, encompassing two vital dimensions of a Christian's life, liberation from the penalty of sin, leading to eternal death, Romans 6, 23, and liberation from mortality, bestowing the gift of eternal life, John 3.15 The Bible extols the magnitude of salvation, referring to it as so great a salvation. Hebrews 2.3 
It's not merely a theological concept, but a transformative reality that enables Christians to experience a better life in the present while securing eternal life in the future. Understanding what we are saved from and the necessity of salvation prompts reflection on humanity's origin and purpose. Going back to the Genesis narrative, we find that God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into him, making him a living soul, Genesis 2:7. Additionally, the prophet Ezekiel emphasizes the sovereignty of God over all souls, declaring that those who sin shall face spiritual death, Ezekiel 18:4:20. Throughout the Bible, human mortality is a recurring theme. Romans 6, 12, 8, 11, 1 Corinthians 4, 11. It underscores the reality that all individuals are bound to face death. However, the concept of salvation offers hope by presenting a path to escape eternal death. It's universally acknowledged that every person, with the exception of Jesus Christ, has committed sin, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3:23. The consequence of sin is death, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6.23. Sin incurs a penalty of death for every individual. Once sin is committed, this penalty is earned, and there's no means to absolve it independently. Deliverance is required. Therefore, humanity necessitates salvation, a deliverance from eternal death, and the bestowal of God's gift which is eternal life. This elucidates the indispensability of salvation and the purpose behind Jesus' incarnation as a human. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19.10 We are all trapped in the consequences of sin, facing the prospect of eternal death, but there is only one way of escape, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He is our source of salvation. The Bible echoes the deep love of God the Father and Jesus Christ for humanity. They created us in their image, desiring to impart eternal life to us. However, for this communion to become a reality, God had to devise a means to redeem us from sin and the accompanying death. Therefore, God the Father and Jesus Christ laid out a meticulous plan to achieve this purpose. Jesus Christ incarnated leading a perfect existence free from sin, thereby evading the death penalty rightfully deserved for transgressions, and ultimately offering himself as a sacrifice for humanity. As the incarnate God, his sacrifice has the power to atone for the sins of all humanity. Romans 5.8 Through his act of forgiveness, Jesus has granted us the opportunity for redemption. It is through his bloodshed that the door to salvation has now been opened to all humanity. However, this does not mean that humanity only needs to acknowledge this sacrifice and instantly be redeemed. The Bible explains that accepting his sacrifice must be accompanied by repentance and forsaking of sin. The words of the prophet Isaiah resonate, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Isaiah 55, 6, 7. The transformation of our lives is an essential aspect of the redemption process. Obedience and salvation are intertwined. When asked about the path to attaining eternal life, the ultimate pinnacle of salvation, Jesus provided profound insight. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Luke 10, 25-28 In a previous encounter, another man approached Jesus and asked, Good teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Jesus replied, 
Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Matthew 19, 1, 16, 17. The Bible makes it clear that salvation is a gift, not earned by human effort, Ephesians 2, 8. However, this doesn't mean we can live however we please and still be saved. Rather, we are called to be God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, Ephesians 2.10. Following God's commandments is part of the good works that Jesus instructed us to do. Sin, as described in 1 John 3.4, KJV, is the violation of God's law, transgressing the way of life he has ordained. Therefore, part of being saved from the consequences of past sin involves earnest efforts to stop sinning. With God's help, we must cease transgressing God's law. As the Apostle Paul clearly stated, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Romans 6, 1, 2. Romans 6, 1, 1, 2 advises us not to persist in sin just because grace abounds. Furthermore, Paul advises in verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Then he poses an important question. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Romans 6, 16. The answer is clear. Sin leads to death while obedience leads to righteousness and eternal life. Paul understood that he would receive a crown of righteousness when Jesus Christ returns, 2 Timothy 4, 8, a promise not only for him, but also for all who eagerly await Christ's return. This signifies attaining eternal life when the process of salvation is complete. You can gather more detailed information from our article, What Does It Mean to Be Saved? Salvation is the divine journey that commences when we embrace the boundless love demonstrated through Jesus Christ's ultimate sacrifice for our sins. It encompasses the miraculous deliverance from the shackles of our past transgressions and the looming specter of death. As we embark on this sacerdotesy, we are beckoned to a life of profound transformation, an evolution of the soul, mirroring the likeness of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. In our pursuit of salvation, we are not merely seekers of redemption, but vessels of divine grace, vessels through which the radiant light of God's love may shine forth into the world. With each step forward, guided by faith and fueled by the fire of divine purpose, we transcend the limitations of our mortal existence, reaching ever closer to the divine perfection embodied in Christ. Yet, salvation is not merely a destination, but a continuous journey, an ongoing symphony of repentance, renewal, and relentless pursuit of righteousness. It is a sacred covenant between humanity and the divine, a covenant sealed with the precious blood of Christ, promising eternal life to all who believe and follow in his footsteps. As we navigate the winding paths of life amidst the tumultuous seas of human existence, we find solace in the eternal promise of salvation. It is the beacon of hope that guides us through the darkest of nights, the steadfast anchor that holds us steady amidst the storms of adversity. In a world marred by sin and suffering, salvation stands as a testament to the unfathomable depths of God's love, a love so profound, so enduring, that it transcends the barriers of time and space to reach every longing heart. It is the divine melody that echoes through the ages, calling out to all who are weary and burdened, offering rest for their souls. And so, we press on, with unwavering faith and unyielding resolve, knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. For in the fullness of time, when the heavens rend asunder and the trumpets sound, we shall be gathered together in the glorious presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. There, in the splendor of his eternal kingdom, we shall experience the true essence of salvation, a boundless union with the divine, an everlasting communion with the source of all life and love. 
Therefore, let us rejoice and be glad, for salvation is not merely a distant dream, but a living reality, a reality that transforms our lives, renews our spirits, and restores our souls. May we embrace this divine gift with open hearts and outstretched hands, knowing that through Christ, all things are possible, and in Him, we find our truest, most profound salvation.